everybody. I am going to show you today some ink from Paniter. This was sent over to me from penchalet.com and they have just recently, they have started to carry Paniter ink. So this is very new to them. I do know that Paniter ink is carried over in the UK. I've seen it over at Colt Pens, but this one, this is the first retailer that I've seen that actually has this ink. So I'm pretty excited about it. I'm a pretty huge fan of Paniter. And so what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna do some ink swatches of these. So I have my ink swatch cards. I've got some Q-tips to swatch with. I have my glass pen to write down what the ink is. And I have a glass of water over here to rinse off my pen. And then of course this paper towel is for the dirty Q-tips when I'm done. Then after all that, I'm going to eyedropper this new All-American Demo pen. And uh, probably with one of these lovely inks, I'm not sure which one yet, I'll do it based on the swatch. So we'll also, I'll also be doing that on camera as well. All right, so let's get started. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go, to go, go from left to right, I suppose. And let me move the pen out of the way for a second. So you have some room to work. I'm gonna start with the Paniter green. And so here's the outer box with uh, the Paniter logo and an image of the box or the ink bottle inside. And underneath it's a little barcode. That's really exciting stuff. And then right here on top, we have some Italian words that I cannot pronounce, but it looks like there's a big bottle in there, 2.5 fluid ounces or 75 milliliters of ink. So let's open this up and see what I've got. All right, so here's the bottle of ink. So the illustrations on the outside is right, and this is all made in Italy. So it's as indicated on the bottom of the bottle. The one thing I'm noticing here right off the bat is that the label with the green doesn't quite match the ink inside. Like it's, this is more of a, I don't know. It's more of a, a, like what I imagine green to be like, and this is more of like a turquoise. So that could be kind of confusing, but it's not a bother to me. So let's go ahead and let's make a swatch of this green ink. So let's open this up and there we go. Yep, so it's pretty green. And dip this in here. And it's gonna be, you guys are like, yes, I can't wait to swatch this. Here we go. So that's, a, that's actually a very lovely shade of green. And it's just in time, I'm gonna put a little more ink here just in time for spring around the corner. Uh, this really kind of gets you in the mood for spring with all the green grass. All right, now I'm gonna take my glass pen and dip it in here and write down what ink we've got here. So this is Paniter. I'm just gonna write green. Just to keep it basic, y'all. Paniter green. Yay. So what I can tell from just this swatch, it does seem like I've got some shading here. I don't see any sheening and that's okay. I sometimes the sheening, when I have, um, when I deal with sheening inks, I tend to find that they're still, they could be a little wet or they just smear, you know, it just smears. So let's get this out of the way. I'm gonna move this to the side. And the next bottle I've got here is the blue. Or no, this is turquoise. Okay, so this is the turquoise. Okay, okay. Ugh. So let's see. I mean, yeah, it looks more blue on the label, but inside I guess it looks kind of turquoise, kind of turquoise blue. So let's see what the, what the ink swatch looks like. Okay, it's like a light blue, sky blue, perhaps. Let's get another card here and see. I do like a nice blue though. Again, another spring. So yeah, this is more turquoise. Let's go light sky blue, I suppose. It's nice, it's a nice blue.
Let me write this down on the card with the glass pen. So we've got a nighter. Turquoise. All right, and we'll let that dry down as well. We'll see if any of these have sheeny. Once they're all fully dry, you'll be able to tell what these inks are capable of. All right, move that to the side. And next we've got the sepia, which is a brown ink. And I do enjoy a nice brown ink, you know? It's, uh, it's lovely, it's more of a, you know, fall color, but sometimes the sepia is just what you need. So let's do an ink swatch of that. Move that out of the way. Yeah, it's, so it's a brown ink. A lighter brown, not a deep chocolate brown or anything like that. But that's really, that's kind of nice too. So let me write that down. The nighter. I'm going to put sepia. So that would be nice with some pens that have like have a brown color to it. Now with all these are still gonna dry down a bit. So let's see what kind of qualities are showing up here. They definitely all of them looks like we're gonna have some shading action here. So let me put these in order actually. There, that's more like it. Alright, so we have green, turquoise, and blue. And I know, what color should I put in the All American Demonstrator? Let's see how that's gonna go. I don't know, I kind of like all of them, but I kind of think the turquoise might be what's calling me today. So I think we're gonna set these aside. And I'm gonna do an eyedropper with the All American, which is a new pen from Conklin that they just released. It is, I think it's a special edition. So while those ink swatches are drying, I'm gonna take a look at this pen. I usually do a full review, but to be honest with you, this morning I did not feel like putting on any makeup <laughs> or getting myself ready for it. But I do wanna play with these inks and show you guys this new pen. Um, so yes, it is the All American Demo Special Edition. As listed, it comes with a cartridge and a converter. And this is just the blue outer sleeve, so I'm gonna slide that off. And the nib I got with this one is the stub nib. I wanted to see if, you know, what the stub nib is like with the new Yovo. I definitely I didn't feel like doing after my last experience. I didn't feel like doing a um, Omniflex. So here is the All American Demo. And I think it's pretty, pretty nice. I mean, it looks like the All American. It's just this time it's see through. And before we move on to that, we have these cards that come with it, um, the refill instructions. Congratulations you for owning this pen, I guess. And uh, just more warranty stuff. So that's cool. That is the one thing Conklin is good about. Their customer service is pretty good. And here we have two ink cartridges that you can, and we have something to use as an eyedropper to put the ink inside of the pen, which we're gonna use today. So let me, I'll just put the paperwork right here and store it. So the All American, here we go. Let me get that out of the way. So it's clear. It's got the silver rocker clip on it. And inside you can see it has the converter. Right here on the barrel, it's etched into All American Special Edition. They're not numbered from what I could tell. I think it's just uh, something that they're doing temporarily. So I don't know if it's like some sort of limited edition or if this is gonna be uh, created for a long-term situation. So here's all that. 
And I'm curious, um, set the cap down. I'm just curious how this is going to eyedropper with the metal part here that's connected to the section. It does have a clear O-ring right here, if you could see that, to keep ink from leaking out. I always thought that if it had like a metal into it, it wasn't a good idea to eyedropper, but you know what? I'm going to do it anyway. So I'm gonna take this converter out because I'm not gonna be using it. And I'm just gonna eyedrop directly into here. So that's basically what it says to do is you take your ink, you've got your eyedropper tool, and you've got your barrel. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this Paniter turquoise. Oh no, that's the green. I don't want the green, the turquoise. <laughs> So I'm going to take the turquoise and I'm going to eyedropper it um, probably about to here just so I have enough room to see the ink swish around and just because I find that to be exciting. <laughs> so here we go. Let's start putting some ink in here. I think it's going to look cool. I've, I've always thought that this would be a cool pen as a demonstrator. All right, that's about where I'm going to go. I thought it would be a cool pen for demonstrating purposes, especially because the capacity, the ink capacity that this could hold would be tremendous. And uh, I'm, I'm actually kind of glad that they over at Conklin decided to try this out. So I'm going to put the ink on here before I have an ink explosion. That's scary. That happened to me last Sunday and it was not pleasant. All right, so let's put this section back in. Okay, hey, turn it over and start with this ink start coming in here. Kind of move it around a bit. Let me get some paper to write on. Nice. Uh, I why this is doing that. I have a nice pad or it's a notebook from Galen. So this is, so right here, I'm noticing that the ink is kind of going over the metal part, which is cool. I mean, as long as it has that ring on it and it doesn't leak anywhere, I'm fine with it. But yeah, I do like to see this, this swish with the ink and the pen, so that's kind of cool. So let's see here, go back to a page on here, so. All right, so it's just gonna take some time to get this ink to get in here. So bear with me. So yeah, it's definitely taking a little time to get here, to get through the uh, feed and then onto the stub nib. Um, in the meantime, just kind of keep shaking it a little bit kind of encouraging that ink to get into the feed so I can do this. Yeah, sometimes that happens. You just kind of wait for it. The one pen that I never have this issue with is the, um, what is that pen that I like? It's this one over here. This pen actually, the ink will I have no problem getting the ink to go in here. So, because it has that valve right here and it kind of helps the ink to, I have the Opus 88 Jazz. It's a good eyedropper. But this one, yeah, I'm gonna have to continue to work on it. It's a little irritating because I inked it up and I'd like to write with it right now, but I don't know, man. Trying this out. Can't seem to get the ink to want to drop into this. So maybe what I'll do is this to get it rolling. Let me set this aside. And then I'm going to fill. Okay, I'm going to fill up the converter just to get the ink into, hey, look at that. I mean, I guess it was working, but look, so the ink is actually starting to go into there. So it's like, how do you clean that? I guess you could unscrew the housing. So that, what that tells me is 
I need to take this apart. So before I do that, I'm going to take, yeah, so it's in there. Okay, so I'm gonna take the nib and its housing out of the section. And I'm going to put some silicone grease on these threads because obviously the, the clear O-ring that was included on here is not working. My little bag of stuff. Get some silicone grease out. I'm sure we all have a little, a little bit of our little tool bag for our fountain pens, right? I need this silicone grease here. That's good, thick stuff. So if you do end up getting this and you don't like ink in the section, just like what I showed you, it does have an O-ring, but it doesn't exactly prevent the ink from going through that. In this out. I like to keep it kind of clean in my section. Maybe that's a little pet peeve of mine that I have. You might be different. So, but if I could put silicone grease to prevent any ink from going through and making a mess, then I'm gonna do it. So here is 100% pure silicone grease that I got from Woodshed when I ordered a pen from them a while back. And I'm just gonna take the silicone grease and just go around here. Just enough to cover the threads. Maybe a little bit over that O-ring, just to ensure that there's no ink getting past that. And then if I end up dipping this pen in the ink to get this going, I don't want to get ink all up in here either, really. But I have a feeling it's gonna happen anyway, because it's the nature of the beast. I put this back in. I just want to make sure nothing's leaking and then I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put silicone grease on to these metal threads right here. I don't want to take any chances of ink leaking anywhere. So it's a good thing to do with eyedropper pens. All right, so to get this thing going, what I'm going to do is, you know what, I'm probably going to, I'm going to put ink in this and then I'm going to force the ink into the to the nib. So let me get the so this ink here. And then I'm gonna replace the cart the converter with the barrel that has ink in it. So let's see how that goes. Alright so here's this. Now I'm just going to I'm gonna push ink in there. Maybe this way, by doing this, I will get a continuous flow of ink. There it goes. And then when I put the barrel back on, see if this starts. When I put the barrel back on, I'll just continue that feed of ink into the nib. Oops, I'm dropping that. Go with that off. But I still don't seem to have a nib that's writing with the ink. I'm going to take this off, and now I'm replacing the barrel. Bring that back over here. All right, so there we go. So good, there's still gonna be a little ink. It's gonna come over that, but that's cool. So here we go. Now I still don't have any, any ink feeding into my nib. This is kind of a pain in the ass. It makes me wish I didn't do this on video. <laughs> If I put a brass shim through there, so that'll help too. Grab that. So I've got my brass shims here. These are great for if your tines are a bit tight or you want to increase the flow of your pen. You could just swipe one through here, through your tines, and it kind of helps actually. So let me do that and maybe by getting some of this ink in here, it'll help it to start writing. There we go, now it's, now it's going. So here we go with the Conklin All-American. 
demonstrator with a 1.1 stub nib. So yeah, it just takes a little work to get it going, but now it's going. And hopefully, it's without ink off there, hopefully it won't be a problem to get it going. Next thing I'm gonna do, let me put the cap back on here. So it does look pretty cool with the ink in there. Something different. So I kind of can't help but to pass. I didn't want to pass on this. It's kind of a little novelty item. So here we go. Uh, in hindsight, I'm kind of wishing I would have put silicone grease up here because that does bother me a little bit. But I'm nitpicky like that. All right, so I'm gonna put the cap back on here and let's check on our swatches because it should have dried down by now and let's see what they look like. I do think my favorite one is the turquoise because it does stand out and it's very vibrant. But I find all three of these inks very usable. The green does have a little bit of sheen to it. You can, I don't know if you can see that, but there's some, there is a little bit of shading. There's some sheen. Turquoise dries down really nice and it does have some shading. Tiny bit of sheen, I can see it right there. Red sheen. And then the sepia, I mean, it has a, it's more shading than there's just a tiny, tiny little bit of sheeny action right there. So, well, I hope you enjoyed this video of this look at the, these three Paniter inks. So Paniter inks are now avail available over at Penn Chalet. And also if you're interested in the All American Demonstrator, that is also available over at Penn Chalet. It is a special edition and I have no idea how long this will be in production. So if you're into demonstrators, you probably will enjoy this pen quite a bit. That's all I've got. Thank you for watching. And that's how the ink flows.